More COVID-related changes coming. What's going into the decision-making process for the Fargo School District? Dropping like flies. That's what a White House official is saying as more staffers test positive for coronavirus. Plus, collecting unemployment while working full-time. The shocking claims our investigative team confirmed. Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. New at 10 tonight, Fargo Public School students are facing yet another change, but it may not be the one many parents were hoping for. After two weeks of distance learning, middle and high school students will go back to hybrid learning on October 19th, but not in the same hybrid model. And elementary students will move to in-person instruction four days a week starting October 26th. Well, ideally, we want K through 12 Monday through Friday going. That's ideally, and I think the data supports that. And that's where I think a lot of the parent frustration is coming into play. Right now, I think we're, we're prioritizing the risk a lot higher than what it actually is. Fargo Public is the only area school system to have made as many changes so far this year. Valley News team's Katie Opperly digs into the decision-making process. Since Fargo Public Schools began about one month ago, the Coronavirus Task Force Committee for the district has made changes over and over. We asked the superintendent what exactly is going into these decisions. There isn't any specific threshold, but there's all of those factors that get taken into consideration. Dr. Gandhi says the task force considers county data, statistics within the schools, as well as data within the district, also considering guidance from health officials. However, there are no set parameters to determine determine exactly what happens. It is at the discretion of the committee. We know that it's in inconvenient, but at the same point, uh, that's the nature of right now is that things are changing on a daily basis. We have to be able to respond accordingly. Laying it all out, back in August, it was announced that all Fargo students would begin the year in a hybrid model. Less than a month later on September 8th, protocol changes were made, including what happens if someone tests positive for COVID-19. Two weeks later, middle school and high school students were told they would be sent home for distance learning. And that brings us to today, where students will soon be able to return to the classroom at least part of the time, but on a different hybrid schedule. And it's expecting even more changes soon. Last week, um, there was a significant change from the governor's office in the quarantine requirements, and that significantly impact and change the way that we're able to operate schools. So obviously that's going to lead to a potential decision change as well, because that made a big impact for us as a committee. Compared to other area districts like West Fargo and Moorhead, Fargo is the only local school system to have made as many changes so far this school year. In Fargo, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. And if you'd like more insights surrounding the district's decisions, the task force meetings, task force meetings are available online. A structure fire in Grand Forks this evening leaves thousands of dollars in damages. It happened at 4710 Golden Gate Drive. Witnesses noticed smoke and fire coming from under the building and alerted those inside who evacuated. Crews extinguished the fire, which was contained to the exterior of the building. Inside, though, there was smoke damage. No one was hurt, and damages are estimated again to be $10,000. The cause is under investigation. We have breaking news just into our newsroom right now. The Fargo City Commission voting 3-2 to two tonight to reject consideration of two proposed mask mandate options. One mandate would have had penalties, one without. Commissioners do have the opportunity to bring it up at a later date. Two men are in jail tonight on multiple charges after a traffic stop this morning. Cass County deputies pulled over their vehicle in the 1900 block of 45th Street North. For starters, the driver had a suspended license. A canine found several illegal items, including a stolen firearm and drugs. 31-year-old Alexander Meyer and 38-year-old Alejandro Gallegos were arrested for distributing narcotics and possession of stolen property. Fargo's new police chief was sworn in tonight at City Hall. 54-year-old David Zabolski takes over for David Todd, who retired. He says as he enters the department, reevaluation is going to be the critical first step, starting with one-on-one -on -one meetings with people in the department to address any issues or listen to any newfound ideas. There's things that we need to be able to address with our officers sooner rather than later, and so the traditional methodology of maybe having an in-service once or twice a year at a a certain time of the year really doesn't meet the needs of not only the department but the needs of the community. Zabolski comes to Fargo after spending 27 years with the Milwaukee Police Department.
Police have a message for those searching for an 80-year-old man who walked away from a memory care facility. Robert McKinnon walked away from Maple View Memory Care in South Fargo Thursday evening and hasn't been seen or heard from since. Police say they cannot organize a public citywide search because there's no definitive information on where he might be. Police say if you do go out to search, be mindful of trespass laws. If you see McKinnon, call 911 immediately. They're again asking everyone to check their home surveillance footage. Construction on a new Dakota Access Pipeline pump station began today, despite a U.S. District Court judge considering another case that could halt the pipeline's operations. Energy Transfer Partners is building the new pump station and improving several existing stations to increase the flow of oil flowing through the pipeline. About 570,000 barrels currently move through the line each day. The improvements could double that the pump station project is being built about five miles west of Linton. Several North Dakota ranchers are upset after a recent article in Prevention Magazine claims beef is bad for your health. The article also claims that cattle are bad for the environment. Uh, Jackie Christman raises cattle near Hedinger. She says cattle is good for grasslands since their grazing helps keep grass in production and reduces the risk of wildfires in hills and wetlands that cannot be farmed. She also says beef is an affordable, healthy source of protein. It's a good quality protein source. And like I said, it's not as expensive as other protein, you know. And you can't, if we didn't eat beef, we wouldn't, most people couldn't afford to eat protein like they think that they could because it would get way too expensive for the rest of the plant-based proteins. North Dakota is home to more cattle than people. The latest USDA numbers show nearly 2 million cattle in the state and roughly 750,000 residents. President Donald Trump is back at the White House tonight, having left Walter Reed Hospital earlier this evening. He spent the weekend there after testing positive for COVID-19 last week. After returning to the White House, the president tweeted out a video describing his experience. And I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went, I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago, two days ago I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Trump's personal physician says he hasn't had a fever for 72 hours, but acknowledged he may not be entirely out of the woods yet. More White House staffers have COVID-19. Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany tested positive today. Two of her staff members have also posit tested positive. In a tweet, she says she'll begin quarantining, but she currently doesn't have any symptoms. She is the 11th person close to the president to recently test positive for the virus. Extra safety measures are being taken for the upcoming vice presidential debate in Salt Lake City. Vice President Mike Pence and Democratic VP nominee Senator Kamala Harris will be separated by plexiglass during the event. The debate is still on track for Wednesday night as Pence continues to test negative for COVID-19. Meanwhile, sources say the two remaining presidential debates are up in the air. Still ahead tonight, unemployment under false pretenses. The company that asked employees to work without being paid, instead taking taxpayer dollars. But first, Nathan joins us with a look at the weather plans for your week. It's coming up next right after this break.